One of the most powerful tools that you can use as an athlete to better your performances, to perform more consistently, to be more sure of yourself, to not overthink, is visualization. Literally, it's called a cheat code in performance. But the problem is this. Most of you don't know how to visualize, right? Most of you haven't been taught how to visualize. There's no real laid out system on how to do so. And what it does is instead overcomplicates things instead of getting you to the next level. So in today's video, we're gonna give you the exact blueprint that you need to visualize and what we do with our pro athletes to use this tool effectively. <music> My name is Matt Calderoni, co-founder of Molotium, where we help athletes discover and reach their true potential by building their resilience. And since 2015, we've helped just over 5,300 athletes, ranging from the youth to professional level across multiple different sports. And the reason that we started this YouTube channel is because I used to be a pro athlete and I never really had these tools and it held me back. So I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't hold you back now. To help this channel keep growing, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and of course share this so we can keep bringing you free content. Now visualization can be titled a bunch of different things right? From visualization to mental imagery to mental rehearsal to what we call it at Malatium being your mental reps, right? Because you're literally doing mental repetitions to get the results that you want. But what mental reps or visualization actually is, is simply using all the five senses in your body to vividly imagine a certain scenario happening in your performance. So that way it feels like you're already practicing it in your head and you walk in there with the neuro associations that you need. I'll explain that in a second. So that you feel certain going into performances. What it's supposed to do is help you reduce overthinking. It's supposed to increase self-belief and it's supposed to help you build your self-trust and decision-making so that you feel going into performances that you can execute the task at hand. Now, the reason that we call these mental reps, like I mentioned before, is because it's just like going into the gym, right? You're doing repetitions, but you're doing them mentally. And as you do more repetitions, you strengthen that self-belief or that certainty that we'll talk about here so that you can go into performances knowing that you're ready to dominate. Now, mental reps or visualization, it doesn't build confidence, it helps build it. It actually directly builds what's known as your certainty or self-belief. It's simply knowing that you have the abilities that you need in order to execute the task at hand versus confidence, which is understanding that you can execute the task at hand based on past results, knowing that those skills work. Because here's the problem with this. What if you're walking into a situation or a scenario or you're going into a spot that you've never experienced before, right? That you've never applied your skills to. Maybe you're trying out for a better team. Maybe you're going into a new team. Maybe you just got traded, regardless of what it is, but you've never been there before and applied those skills there. Problem is this then, confidence will dwindle, right? That's where you start to get a little bit nervous before going into it, a little anxious maybe, you're overthinking things, you're not too sure. But mental reps actually help your nervous system create something called neuro associations, meaning that you can walk into a situation feeling like you've been there before if you imagine that situation, enough intensity and enough emotion that it feels like you're walking into something and you're already prepared for it. That's what we wanna build. We wanna build that self-belief as an athlete because what you'll see is self-belief actually ends up building and helping to build confidence. But self-belief comes first, right? If you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna take action. And if confidence is simply knowing that you can get the result based on past performances, based on using those skills before, you need to have self-belief first so that you can then take the actions necessary to build that confidence. So here's how this whole thing with certainty works. When it comes down to it, your certainty is actually at the root of tapping into your most potential. Here's why. Like you can see here, certainty comes first from believing in yourself. When you have more certainty in yourself, you tap into more potential and you tap into more potential by taking bigger actions. And you, when you take bigger actions, of course you get better results. So here's the thing, where most people get this wrong is that they walk into performances, and maybe you've been here before, where you're not really sure of yourself. So as a result of that, you tap into a little bit of potential because you're hesitant on your actions, right? Think about it. You know what to do most of the time, but usually it's that you're hesitating. You're not too sure of yourself. You're overthinking things. Then as a result of that, because you're taking small hesitant actions, the results you get aren't that great. And what this actually does then is it causes an entire feedback loop where that certainty gets lower, you tap into less potential, you take smaller actions, get smaller results, and as a result of that, you get into what's known as a slump, right? So to reverse this, it's as simple as it is, you actually need to work on your certainty, because think about it, it's not that you need to build more potential, you already have potential. Now we know that you need to take bigger actions, but like we just talked about, if you're not truly believing in yourself, if you don't have that self-belief, that certainty, you're not gonna take action to the fullest extent. You're gonna hold back, you're gonna hesitate, and you're not gonna get the results that you want. So when it comes down to this, you have to realize, visualization or mental reps, 
builds your certainty. And you wanna build that certainty so you can tap into your most potential. In the most basic form, here's how mental reps work. What you wanna do is find a scenario, right, that you're a little bit unsure of, that you're hesitant on, and you wanna break it down into the one to two skills that allow you to be successful with that scenario. So let's pretend I want to um, be a better goal scorer, okay? And I'm gonna break down that, let's say I find a component of movement that allows me to score more goals and utilizing my shot in a certain way. Right there, you have your two skills. What you're gonna do now is visualize those skills consistently, and I'll give you the framework in a sec, so that you can build certainty in those skills so when you go to that situation, you're sure of yourself, right? So here's how this works. Like you can see here on the screen in this little pyramid, right? You're gonna start with understanding the desired result you want. Then you're gonna break that down into one to two skills. Then you're gonna work on your certainty and simply build your certainty by visualizing those skills over and over and over again. Now, when you visualize this over and over again, you're creating these things, like I said before, called neuro associations. The best way to explain what a neuro association is, and the research shows us, is that it's like tracing over a piece of paper over and over again, right? Have you ever taken a piece of paper and you just keep drawing a circle and circle and circle? Eventually, if you keep drawing it enough, the ink from the pen gets absorbed right into it and you rip right through the page, right? And then you have that permanent kind of circle that's in the page, unless you obviously glue it back. Now, when you put enough repetitions into it over and over again, the research shows us that your body actually doesn't know the difference between you physically practicing it and mentally practicing it. The only thing that's gonna determine if it does is how intensely and with how much emotion you actually visualize this. So, what you need to remember is when you're doing this and you're breaking those skills down, we wanna understand the skills that go into those scenarios so you can tap into the most potential with it, you're not hesitant in your actions, and you get those results. Does that make sense? Simple stuff. Now, here's the cool thing about this. We know that from tons of research being done, that there, this has been used since like the 90s to help people build their certainty behind their skills. There was a great study done on track runners that shows this. There was a great study done on, you know, one of the most famous ones with basketball players where they actually took a group of 30, had them go practice their free throws. They broke up that group of 30 into three groups of 10. They took one group and said, pretty much just continue doing what you're doing. They took another group of 10 and said, just physically shoot, which is what most people do when they're unsure of themselves. Then they took a group of 10 and said, you're gonna do three perfect visualizations of shooting the ball perfect with perfect form, with intensity, with emotion, so that it feels like you're actually doing it in your head. You're not gonna actually move, you're just gonna visualize it. The ones that visualized it, that group actually got the best results, 25% better results, 80% of them did, than the entire group. So what does that go to show? If you can use visualization as a part of what you're doing in your athletic performance, you're gonna be able to get more consistent and better results because you will simply have more certainty in yourself, right? More certainty means that you're gonna be able to take bigger actions, and bigger actions mean better results. It's that simple. Now here are a couple common mistakes that athletes make, and maybe you're making one of these, when it comes to visualizing. The first one, they only visualize the end result. They don't take the time to visualize those skills, and as a result of that, they don't walk into performances feeling sure of themselves. You wanna make sure, like we talked about, with that certainty, potential, actions, results, you wanna make sure you're tapping into the most potential, but that comes from being sure of the actions you need to take, right? Not being sure of the result. Think of it, we can't just jump from certainty to result. It's certainty, potential, action, results. So you need to visualize the skills, not just the end result. The second mistake is not being specific enough. Most athletes kind of wing it, right? They kind of just know what they wanna visualize, but don't really, they don't get specific and break it down. Your mind needs you to be specific. Your nervous system wants you to be specific in specific scenarios. And we, when we go through an example in a second, you'll see how specific I mean. Number three, athletes are trying to be perfect on their first try when it comes to visualizing. Listen, visualization, mental reps, it's a skill, right? Calming your mind down, it's a skill. Doing all that, it's a skill. Be patient with yourself. Some people will try it once and feel like it's a one pill solution to all of their issues when it's not. It takes practice. You gotta build this up. You gotta do it over and over again, create that mental muscle. And the final mistake is that athletes don't differentiate between motivational visualization and skill-specific visualization. We're here to build skills, to build certainty. That's skill-specific visualization. Motivational visualization is when you actually visualize yourself not getting a result to create pain so that you get up, take action, and move forwards. We're not talking about that here today. That's for another video that we'll talk about separately. Today is specifically talking about skill-specific visualization. So here's how we do mental reps with our pro athletes and all the athletes that we work with. First things first, we're gonna use a simple framework of doing three sets of 10 repetitions, okay? I'm gonna break down these repetitions in a sec, but we're gonna have you visualize one specific thing for 10 reps, one specific thing for 10 reps, one specific thing for 10 reps. You'll be doing 30 total reps, just like you would in the gym, for one specific scenario. So, 
Let's talk about how you got to see this all. Visualizing is like building a house. You need to start with a foundation, then you need to build in the other things like the bricks, the doors, the windows, the insulation, all that great stuff. Then you need to end with the roof. The problem is this though. Most athletes, when they visualize, try to start with the roof alone, right? Meaning that they start to, they try to start with the outcome only, like I mentioned before, and then build down. But the problem is this, you can't build a house that way, right? So you need to understand that we're gonna start with the most basics when we're visualizing. So to discover what these three sets of 10 reps are going to be, we're gonna actually work through this. And this is where I'll encourage you, get a notebook, a piece of paper, a pen, something, write this down, because this is where you can actually do your transformative process right here, right now, okay? So let's start with this. The first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what is the desired outcome that I want? Okay, describe it. It could be I want to score more goals. It could be I want to be better defensively in this certain area. It could be I want to throw, you know, if you're a quarterback in football, I want to hit a wide receiver on this certain slant. Whatever it is, describe that scenario. What is it? What do you really want? What's the desired result? So now that I know the scenario, I'm going to ask myself, what skill goes into me scoring more? So if I'm a soccer player again and I'm trying to score more, I'm going to break it down and say, hey, I've got to be able to utilize my shot inside the 18 yard box. Great, now I have the skill I'm going to visualize. So once we have that skill we're gonna visualize, we're gonna break it down into the first set of 10 reps. And the first set of 10 reps is just the basic technique that you're going to see yourself utilizing when it's actually using the shot. So I'm not gonna say I wanna see myself scoring with 10 defenders around me. I'm not gonna visual visualize myself scoring in a game. I'm going to break it down first, just like with the free throwers, right, in basketball. And I'm just going to see perfect technique. So my first set of 10 reps, what I'm gonna write down is, it's going to be seeing myself just shooting the ball into the exact corner I want to score in and doing that 10 times. Just visualize that. I'm going to see the ball at my foot, hitting it the way I want to with the inside of my foot maybe or the laces, whatever you use, and I'm seeing it go right into that corner. If I'm a quarterback, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to see myself dropping back, perfect release, throwing the ball, hitting my wide receiver in the hands. The key to this is the following though. Finish with the desired result. So don't just say I want to see perfect technique shooting a ball. I want perfect technique, shooting the ball, seeing it go into the right corner. That's the end result, right? If I'm a quarterback, I'm gonna throw the ball, but seeing it hit my wide receiver in the hands. If I'm a basketball player and I'm practicing, let's say three point shooting, I'm gonna pull up, see that perfect technique, but see the ball go into the net. You have to end with that desired result that you want so that it starts to train the perfect technique. Your second set of 10 reps, you need to visualize yourself overcoming a challenge. Problem is this. Most athletes just visualize perfect results or just perfect technique, and then when they hit the thing that's challenging them the most, they don't know how to work through it. So what you're going to do is describe right now exactly what it is that's giving you the most challenge and holding you back in this scenario. So if I'm gonna say, okay, I'm a soccer player and I'm trying to score more, and the thing I'm practicing is my shot in the 18 yard box, maybe the biggest challenge I have is when a defender steps right in front of me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is describe that challenge. So the thing I'm gonna visualize is the defender stepping in front of me, but then what you wanna do is describe how to get around that challenge and you're gonna visualize that. So a defender steps in front of me, I make a cut to the right, I pull the ball around and I shoot to score and I see myself scoring. But you're ending with that end result, right? So you're starting with that basic skill and adding a challenge now. So take the time and do that and work through that challenge and see yourself go through the challenge, but be successful with it and overcome it with the desired end result. And then finally, the last set of 10 reps, all you're going to do is visualize yourself achieving that desired outcome. So now I'm just gonna visualize myself scoring in my upcoming game. It's that simple, right? So let's look at how exactly this just built. So I started with my foundation of building that house, which was just visualizing perfect technique, seeing the ball go into the net. Then I added in the more complex stuff, which was adding in the bricks, the doors, the foundation, all that, by seeing myself cut around that defender and score. And then finally, I put the roof on, which was visualizing that desired outcome. Do you see where most athletes can get this wrong? And they just visualize the end part. You need to see yourself do the basics so you trust yourself. Then you need to visualize yourself going through that challenge. Then you need to see yourself getting that end result. Now, what you're going to do is use this three times a week at least. You can do it more. I suggest you do it more. But the key is this. Don't just do it on the day of a game. Don't just do it on the day of a performance. You actually want to do this right before you go to bed because your brain goes into a certain state called theta before then. And it actually works in a hypnosis type of way where you're training this now when you go to sleep. If you can make this one of the last things that you do before you go to bed, this will be one of the most impactful things. So the next question we got to answer quickly is this. How do we visualize? It's great you told me that, but how do we do it? I suggest the following. Number one, we actually link down below the mental reps audio track that we use with our athletes. All you need to do is click it, download it, and you'll get it. In that audio track, I guide you. I give you the three sets of 10 reps that you utilize. I walk you through it that you need to. I cue you up. You just need to go through it and follow the exact directions. Now, if you want to do this on your own, totally fine too. You want to make sure you find a quiet space in your house 
somewhere that nobody else is. You want to close your eyes and you want to vividly imagine these things with emotional intensity and perfection. This is where you're allowed to be perfect because you're training those skills now, right? You can use a simple meditation track if you want, like a calming music part. I highly suggest you don't use hype music because sometimes that can rush our athletes going through the process. You don't need that. You need to slow down. You need to see it with perfection and create those neural associations. So again, at least three times a week, I suggest doing it as many times as you can. Do it the night before. That way it gets into your mind, it sinks into your subconscious, and you're doing it on automatic repeat the next day. Now the last thing that you wanna add in to make sure that you're building your confidence piece, because remember I said this is part of it, now that you visualize it, you actually wanna go practice these three sets of 10 reps somehow physically three times a week. So I'm gonna take 10 minutes and practice just perfect shot technique, 10 minutes and practice myself beating a defender and scoring, and then practice myself you know, in the game-like intensity and scenario, being a defender, scoring, and being successful. If I can practice those three things three times a week, how do you think your confidence is gonna be going into games? I'm telling you, this is the cherry on top. It's the thing that works the best and it will work for you. It's our foolproof system with all our pro athletes. And there you have it. Now you know how to visualize. So please, if you got something from this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. It helps this channel grow. We can bring you more free content. And of course, share this with as many people as you possibly can. It really helps us to get our content out and it allows us to help more people. Now, if you really wanna take your game to the next level and work with a Molotium coach or use one of our courses or get into the Molotium pocket coach or even just simply get into our free private community, the Ring of Difference Makers, it's all linked below. Simply click on it and we'll see you all there. So if you like this clip and you wanna watch another one, click right here. And if you wanna watch the full podcast episode, click right here.